Doobie, doobie doo, I need to change my battery do. Do dooby dooby battery blue. La 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 la, where the heck is that color? Okay. Hey guys, welcome back. What's up? All of those things, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> it is pouring down rain outside, so we are doing a lot of artificial light today. I hope that you can still see detail. We will check as we go. Today, we're doing a try to get ready with me to kind of ah, break up the structure a little bit. <laughs> it's been a lot of really, really information rich videos, which Super awesome, I love making them, and it's worth it for me because the comments are always so appreciative, and it's my favorite thing to do, to make my videos really useful. But we all gotta just loosen up and shake it out sometimes, and I have so much makeup that I need to try that don't all kind of make one video in and of themselves. So, I have stuff from Authored, which is Tanya Burr's new line, it's all eco-conscious, very light, lightweight and everything. Um, I'm gonna be sharing a few things from this. Then I have a bunch of new phytosurgeons. I have new blushes from phytosurgeons. I have some new eyeshadows that they sent me. So thank you to them for sending these to me. Gonna be doing that. I have had <laughs> this Freck Slime Light for ages and have not found a way to get it into a video yet. So I'm gonna be doing that. I have the M Cosmetics Cheek So Soft blushes that I talked about in my roundup of M Cosmetics last week, but I haven't gotten to use one of the shades on camera. And I also feel like I didn't get to like give enough attention specifically to that formula and the application of it in that video. So I wanted to give you guys another look at that. We'll see what else I can squeeze on my eyeballs as well. I also have, <laughs> Thank you, Ko says. They sent me their three new shades in the wet lip oil. So I have unbuttoned, unzipped, and unhooked. They are all so, so beautiful. So beautiful. I will swatch all of these today. I will, you know, put on whichever one ends up being my favorite, but spoiler, they're all really pretty. <laughs> and, oh, I know I have more than that. What was that, babe? What was that? I said, it was only a kiss. How did it I love him. I told my husband, um, sometimes it's like living with the smartest man I've ever met, and sometimes it's like living with a minor bird. Yeah, I think that that's it. I think that that's it, and I'm going to be, as per usual, answering your questions so that I don't do that thing where I just run off at the mouth and don't really end up saying anything. So I went on my Instagram and I put up a Q&A prompt. So without further ado, fam, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, the hair's going back. My husband says that the one, and this was after prodding him very, very much, like the one look that I have that isn't his favorite is the Steve Jobs look, so I hope you guys like it. So I'm gonna start with this. I've never tried it before. It's the, I love the name of the Phytosurgeon's products. Verdant Force Field Restorative Moisturizer from Phytosurgeon's. I have not tried any of their skincare before. Ooh, no smell, which is nice. It is yellow on my hands, which is, I'm ambivalent about. <laughs> We're prepped and primed, that's just lovely. Okay, I'm going to, before I jump into the questions, I want to talk just a second about this because I think that this is the new brand out of this entire collection to my channel today. So Tanya Burr, if you don't know who that is, she is originally from the Zoe Sugg culinary universe. She was a popular YouTuber way back, probably peaked, you know, 2014, around that time period. And she had a beauty line called Tanya Burr Beauty or Tanya Burr Cosmetics back then that was apparently great. She went off the map for a little while, did some acting on stage and such. Comes back, we have a tinted moisturizer. I have a mascara. I have a brow pomade, 
that is life-changing, okay? And I also have a lip balm from her that is like, it's clear, you know? I mean, I'll go ahead and put it on for the sake of science. Where did I put that? But the packaging is very pretty. It's all either silver or this really pretty, like, dusty coral color. This is called the lip balm. <laughs> it's called the lip balm. I'm gonna turn this down just a touch. And it's quite emollient heavy feeling in a good way, like hydrating, you know, but uh, everything's vegan. So the best way that I can describe this and why I didn't make a whole video about it is because, well, A, there are four products and B, it's just kind of glossy, but a little bit better. <laughs> like it's all vegan and all sustainable and everything with the packaging. I even brought one of the boxes upstairs to show you guys how it came apart because you like rip this right here and then this opens up like this and that's how the product comes out. And yeah, it completely flattens out to easily be recycled and it's also made from recycled materials. So that is very neat. So anyway, gonna put this on and let's, let's, start, let's start with a question. How do you and Mike balance household and parental duties? <sighs> I will say that starting out, it was really hard. You know, you just don't really know. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't know who's gonna be good at what. You don't know who's gonna have instincts and passion for what, but you just grant each other some grace, right? And it's easier said than done. But you finally figure out what works for you. And I do think it's different for everybody, but the way that we do it is first thing in the morning, I, w I wake up, Mike wakes up. Mike usually has a much more fitful night's sleep than I do, so a lot of times he's up before me. And he makes the coffee and he gets the baby's bottle ready. Simon is still on a couple of bottles of formula a day because he was really late to chewing food and, well, he was late to swallowing food. And now he finally is, but it's still taking a minute. So he's still on formula just to get his calories and everything in. And that's kind of my moment with him in the mornings. So Mike goes and gets the baby out of bed and he changes him and everything. Waking Simon up in the morning is, or from a nap or anything, is always super sweet. I mean, even if he's like upset when he wakes up, it's still just so sweet to see them when they first wake up. It's so cute. And so he gets to go do that. And he, by the way, I'm using the Beauty Pie under eye corrector. I like it. So he goes and wakes him up, he gets his bottle, he brings him to me, and then while I'm feeding him and just having like our quiet morning moment together, he goes and gets my coffee and he brings that upstairs and we just have family time. And then Mike will go downstairs a lot of times or he'll have already done it. He'll make his bottles for daycare. And then I, first I pick out Simon's outfit and then I bring it to Mike and Mike changes him into his, you know, daytime outfit for daycare. And I go and I make all of his food. I usually cook him an egg. I will cook him some veggies, sometimes smash him up some blueberries or pack him some pasta, some baby mum mum, just things that he can grab with his hand and, you know, shove them in his face. He loves cheese, loves shredded cheese. It is like the miracle food for him. He loves it so much. And he also really likes baby mum mum. It's like these little rice biscuits. So then Mike comes downstairs, Simon's dressed. I finished packing his bag. I load him in Mike's car. Mike takes him to daycare and I pick Simon up from daycare. I wanna use Kosa's, yeah, but I wanna use one because that is a pretty pale foundation shade right now and I wanna kind of stay in the, in the pale of it all for the moment. So when we pick him up, when I pick him up, selfishly, I think I have the better job. It's a very quick ride home and then we just hang out as a family and play. And usually Mike kind of watches him while I cook, unless we're having something that, you know, Mike is perfectly comfortable cooking. It's not that he's a bad cook, it's just that like, I perf I like cooking more. And so um, I, you know, make dinner and Mike watches Simon and constantly, you know, corrals him so that he's not wandering into the kitchen the entire time. I, I usually like prepare something for Simon too, so that he can at least like practice eating with us. And so he eats in his high chair and we all eat together. And then I usually like, I don't know, I'm just very, the word is obsessed. I just love, I just, I mean, not that Mike doesn't love the kid. I'm just like really into him right now. <laughs> and I just love playing with him. 
And so I, um, I kind of play with him in the evenings and Mike does too, but I'm, I'm just so like, I don't know. I'm just so interested in everything that he's doing. And then Mike usually like calms him and everything before bed and puts him down. And sometimes it switches up, you know, depending, cause like the baby gets in moods for, and I'm sure parents have experienced this before, they get in moods for different parents. Sometimes he's really into Mike and sometimes he's really into me and that will kind of like shift sometimes who does what. You know, I'm not gonna say it's like, anyone's example to follow. It's just what works for us. Oh, and then when we get home, Mike usually throws him in the backpack. <laughs> he throws him. Uh, in the baby backpack, we have one from uh, Osprey. It's amazing. I will link it below. And we take a walk with the dog. That's something that we do every time when uh, Simon gets home. Let's go in with some of the stuff that I haven't gotten to really talk enough about from M Cosmetics. I have here the bronzer in summer and something that i didn't really get to call out when i was talking about it before is that even though it's very very creamy and i find that it doesn't really show up so much on the skin in the stick you can see a tiny touch of shimmer of like a reflective quality in there like little gold sparkles but i swear that i cannot see them on my skin I'm going to actually use this as a bronzer not try and contour with it here. But that is something that I have found with this. Like, look at how it's called the So Soft Stick. How soft it is, like it actually puts a little dent in the stick. She just makes formulas that are a little bit different, you know, always in really positive ways to me. And I really appreciate just like how all you have to do is touch this to your skin. I got this big old BK brush. BK is also coming out with some new stuff that they sent me, but it has not arrived yet. And trying to shoehorn that in with all this other stuff probably would have been a little bit difficult. So it will be in a future get ready with me, or maybe I'll do a whole video on it, depending on how much there actually is. Oh, okay. Trigger warning. We're going to talk about weight. Tips for accepting weight gain. I'm working on recovery still, trying to stay in this is not a comfortable topic for everybody, but I do think that it's a healthy thing to discuss because, you know, anybody, it doesn't matter what you look like, can struggle with these things. I will say that the biggest thing that helped me to accept it was, well, first of all, it was really, it was really hard initially, and I don't want to say that it was easy. I found, <laughs> I found that when I'm very, very thin in the sense of restricting, I get very, very unhappy. I sleep all the time. You know, you might have this like momentary thrill of like, wow, look at me. I'm so extreme in one direction or another, but I, it, not eating makes you depressed, full stop. It just makes you feel like garbage. It makes your brain kind of go into this like conservation mode where, you know, you're just not taking really full breaths. <laughs> you feel like you never get like a deep breath. It's like your body starts shutting down. Yeah. I, I just found that like the best way to fend off the depression that tends to make such habits snowball in the first place is to make sure that I'm actually eating enough. And a lot of times that means that when I do actually make time to sit down to a meal, I go ahead and I really like make enough of it that I'm going to be full. So in the morning I have yogurt with granola. It's a lot of yogurt with a lot of granola because I know me, I know I'm going to get halfway into a task later in the morning and not want to take a break to eat if I get hungry. And so I make sure that I'm good and full. So it buys me a lot of time to be busy, you know? I would say that that's like the best thing is just knowing that even though you might not be comfortable with what you're looking at, start to equate in your mind, carrying a little bit more weight is gonna be like healthier for your serotonin, for your happy chemicals in your brain because it's what your body needs to run like to, to function, not to like go run a lap, to function. And I mean, pretty much anybody who you see in like social media who has gotten really, really thin at one point or whatever, if they have ever opened up about it, they will say that was the unhappiest period of my life. And it's like, it's science, you know, <laughs> it's science. When you don't eat enough, you get tired and sad. That's just the way that it works. And so I learned that, um, you know, food as fuel is something that's non-negotiable because I do constantly want to try and negotiate with it. It's just who I am. It's how my brain works. I understand that the sickness does not ever fully go away, but that's why I do yoga is because it doesn't burn. It's not cardio in the sense of like, I want to burn what I ate today. It is about 
taking that energy that I have consumed and using it to feel strong and sexy and give some of my, my time back to myself. And it kind of completes a circuit to me of having boundaries about who gets to have expectations of me and my food and my weight and, and whatnot. It's truly about finding the source of those judgments and, and really like coming toe to toe with that. Because if it's you, then you need to kind of concentrate on, you know, you. But if it's, if it's something like outside of you, draw a boundary and say like, guess what? You know, whoever is impressing this upon me, whether it be social media or a person in my life or some kind of something that, you know, happened to me as a child or something like, go ahead and address it and say like, okay, you have had control over me up until now and you don't get to have expectations of me. Like this is my life. So yeah, happiness is the most important thing and so much of happiness, people are like, oh, happiness is the decision. Happiness is chemical. <laughs> and if you can have some kind of control over that, be it with your food or with uh, going to therapy or with medication or whatever, you have to do whatever is best for you. And that involves like taking the time, like stopping your routine for a second and taking the time to ask yourself, like truly like take inventory of what you need. And for me, like I literally went to a therapist and I was like, man, all I do is sleep all the time, man. She's just like, okay, here is an acronym. It's HALT, H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Any of those things means that you need to stop, halt, and take inventory of your situation. And it means that you need to like ask yourself what needs to be fixed. It is not a binary thing of like, this is good or this is bad. It's like, this is uncomfortable and it feels wrong to you because it needs to be addressed. So I think that was a really helpful thing for me. And honestly, it's so dumb. It was staring me right in the face like, eat, idiot you'll feel so much better. And so I'm like, eat idiot, I feel so much better. <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot simpler than I wanted to make it, but that's the sickness, isn't it? Okay, so in that time period, I was applying Bitten, the shade that I hadn't gotten to use yet from M Cosmetics like on camera, and it is the Fjord Z shade. I am planning on like swatching all of my Fjord Z shades off camera, finding like how they stack up cool to warm or undertone wise. And I'm going to do like a full face swatch video of the best Fjords shades. And I'm going to do them like in order of cool to warm or warm to cool, what have you. So that you can pick the one that works for you. That is what I've decided. That's the best way to do it. And that way it's not like this like chaotic swatching journey where you guys are like, which one is which? I'm just gonna do them one at a time and I'm actually going to, <gasps> shocking, I know, plan the video. But like, look at that, look at it. That's just the So Soft Bronzer, whatever. She calls it like a multi-face play, but for me it's a bronzer in summer and bitten and like, we got freckles, we got healthy flush. It's just, it's a whole mood. I did wipe a little bit too much of it off right there. I tend to do that. It's, it's a trick of the eye too, because the light tends to hit my cheek in a funny way over there. And sometimes it looks like I did and I didn't, but that's where I tend to do it. Yee. I love this color. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's just this really, really, Oh, come on. You know, the face focus is so good for 90% of what I do, but swatches, I have to completely block my face out and you can like feel my frustration. So phytosurgeons did also send me their highlighter, but I want to at least swatch the cheek slime, the slime light. <laughs> slime light. Such a gross name, honestly, but I want to swatch it and decide. So again, this is from Freck. Yeah, this is a whole, a whole other vibe because I'm, you know, it definitely is gonna dry down the same way that the Freck Cheek Slime does that kind of, it's, it's a little bit quick to dry down. And that is, um, that's like a Pat McGrath level trichrome. The Phytosurgeons is just, it's just more wearable for me. Plus they sent me a brush and I wanted to try that. Tell us the story behind your head scars. 
Well, I mean, it's not really that much of a story. <laughs> I used to ride a bike everywhere that I went in college. I was kind of a, a grungy little kid and uh, I decided one day in my infinite wisdom to go for a bike ride. By the way, this is the highlighter. It's in the shade Divine Daylight. This is their Spectral Shine. So yeah, I, I just decided to, you know, go for a ride and I was out on Capitol Circle in Tallahassee, Florida. And that's so pretty. That's such a good, a good highlight. Oh yeah, very, very subtle, but that means that I can really like put it in a wide area because it's not going to like distort the light too much. And it's like weightless on my skin. Feels really good. All right, we're gonna continue chasing the phytosurgeon's feeling. I'm going to just like keep going on my eyes. I'm gonna start with Defiant Dahlia. It's just kind of this gorgeous, slightly shimmery taupe color from phytosurgeons. So I'm out on Capital Circle and I decide time to go home. I'm gonna go home, you know. And uh, I saw a car cresting the hill. I promise this isn't like, I don't know, it trigger content warning. I'm going to talk about getting hit by a car. <laughs> um, this was in 2008. So uh, anyway, yeah, I um, go to cross the road on my bike and I swear to you guys, I felt this like impact on my left side as you know, I'm crossing and the car does this. And I realized that anytime you're crossing a road, you're in this tenuous mindset where you're thinking, am I going to make it? And when you get smacked, <laughs> you have the simplest thought. You go, huh, I guess I didn't make it. <laughs> didn't make it in time. <laughs> yeah, uh, it really wasn't that funny at the time. Apparently I uh, passed out and I woke up to someone loading me into the back of their car just to get me off the road. And then I became fully awake in the back of an ambulance where they had me on like a board. And I remember yelling at them. I was like, get me off of this thing. Give me something for the pain. It hurts so much. I hate this hard board. And they were like, we don't know if your back is broken. You have to be on this board at least until we get to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. They told me they couldn't sedate me because they didn't know if I had a concussion. I get to the hospital and the cops come in and they're like, hey, we just need you to sign this thing that says that this was your fault. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I might've been crossing the street, but like I was on a bike and was hit by a car. I'm pretty sure that that doesn't mean it's my fault necessarily, or at least that there's like, you know, something to discuss here. And so um, I also had been telling the, um, the EMTs, I was like, my mom's gonna kill me. And they're like, I'm pretty sure she's gonna be glad that you're okay. My mother was uh, pretty upset, but she was actually at the beach. You know, I was in college, so like I didn't live with her at the time, but we lived in the same town. You know, I didn't have my phone on me. All I have is my ID. Uh, they sent in a, uh, since, you know, I was kind of part of this like larger, you know, bike community in Tallahassee. Um, they had this guy, his name is Jeremiah. Um, he's an EMT. And he um, was also kind of part of the cycling community in Tallahassee. And so he said, I always come in and check when I see a car versus bicycle, which is what the incident is called in triage. And he's like, you know, I, uh, not, he was an EMT, he was a triage nurse. But he worked at the hospital and he came in and he was like, hey, you know, um, is there anybody that like I can get in touch with for you? And um, we kind of just like, bleary, like discuss who knew who and whatever. And through our friend Danny, he got my friend Ben's number. My friend Ben came to the hospital to be with me. And um, he ended up like driving me back to my house and stuff because my mom, we couldn't get in touch with her. I literally left her a voicemail. I'm like, I'm okay, but uh, I got it back. I got a, uh, what do you call it? A CT scan. And they're like, you need to stop crying. We can't get a clear image. I was like, man, to be so bad. And they wouldn't let me be. <laughs> um, and so then they brought these nurses in and they're like, okay, here's a bedpan, pee. And I was like, I can't pee with all you guys standing here. Uh, so I had to be, you know, escorted to the bathroom. Either way, I ended up basically getting hit by the car 
on one side of me and by my bike in between my legs, obviously. And then I rolled onto the hood. Turns out like the diagram that they showed, I had like gone all the way across to the other side of the highway somehow. I didn't end up breaking anything because I truly didn't think I was going to get hit. So I didn't brace myself. If I had like braced myself, they said that I would have broken bones, but I didn't. And so I just kind of blah, blah, like sack of potatoes, like rolled onto the hood of the car. By the way, I'm now going with Orchid Overload. This is the Flash Fluorescence. This is like a glitter topper. It's gorgeous. I ended up getting cut by the windshield, both on my, my shoulder, which I have, you guys might've seen it. I have a scar right here. Um, I got this great uh, asphalt that's like, you know, my souvenir right there in my arm. And then I also, this is what we're talking about. I have my, my bald spot right here, which, you know, they said would grow back. I will never forget. Oh, by the time I had kind of woken up in the hospital, they <laughs> had already shaved my head right there. <laughs> and they said, you can't shave my head, I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> Okay, A, who cares? B, we already did it. <laughs> I was like, oh. So um, they uh, they shaved that and it was really funny having to grow back in. My roommate and I gave it a name. I can't remember what the name was. But anyway, I got home and I remember like, you know, my mom got there and she took a bunch of pictures of the situation and immediately got like, you know, a personal injury attorney or whatever. We ended up having to, to do all that. Like I said, the cops were ready to just be like, so you're an idiot. Regardless, you know, it was her insurance company that paid me. No one went broke over this or anything, but I, call, I called my salon and my lovely friend, Erin, who was the receptionist at the time, she says, yeah, you know, um, how long do you, do you need me to cancel your appointments for? And I was like, just through the weekend, it'll be fine. Apparently she knew better and she uh, canceled my appointments for like the next two weeks, which thank God, because I woke up the next day and I couldn't walk. Everything had seized up. I'm not going to stick the photos in. I have been flagged on Facebook for even putting them up because they were gnarly and I wasn't allowed to shower for like two or three days or something. And let me tell you, when you do finally shower, you think that your injuries are going to be what hurts, but, uh, it's the road rash. It's the invisible stuff, man. Road rash is the gnarliest. By the way, I'm using Moonrise Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadow from M Cosmetics right now. That's just my like inner corner highlight thing. Anyway, you know, it took me a couple of months to like fully, fully heal. And I still have, if I'm just like, you know, standing there before you in like a bathing suit or something, you would be able to see my right top inner thigh has like a bulge and it's just basically like a knot of scar tissue from where my bike hit me. I was not wearing a helmet. I'm lucky to be alive. Like, you know, there's just, and this is when I was 20, you know, I was just kind of a, a, a brazen a-hole and I swore like I would never ride a bike again. And then, you know, as soon as I was back able to ride a bike again, um, I just uh, rode it on campus, but I stopped like commuting, <laughs> you know, on roads. Oh, and as Ben was driving me home, the morphine made me really nauseous and I barked out of his window. I'll never forget that either. And he started calling me champion after that, I think. So yeah, it really took a village. <laughs> kind of like, you know, putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. But uh, I am very grateful that, you know, all I sustained were a few cosmetic wounds. It could have been a lot worse. Oh, and my friend Sarah, Top Knot Nails, I think is what she's called on Instagram. She was a good, I mean, she still is a good friend of mine, but she was a good friend of mine in Austin. She worked at the juice bar that I went to and she always had really great nails. And she also was in a much more obviously, at, like they were at fault kind of bike accident. She'd gotten like rear-ended by a car on her bike in Austin, which is just like not okay. And she was like, I don't really know what to do. I don't know how to hire a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I basically walked her through the entire process and she ended up getting enough of a settlement out of it that she was able to uh, quit her job with the juice bar and go to nail school. And now she owns her own nail salon and does like amazing artistic nails in Portland. So I feel like it served a really great, a really great higher purpose personally. I want a little bit more of something cool toned on my cheeks. Maybe Inferno? Ooh. 
Ooh, Jason. <laughs> this is pretty. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh. It's like tan, cool, rose, terracotta. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's so much. Like when I saw the back of this, I thought it was gonna be kind of warm rosy or like too orange, but it's actually so perfect. So I like the Phytosurgeons blushes because they go to more of a powder finish. They're really, really thin. Even the eyeshadows, like they, they start out spreadable and then they do actually dry down and commit, which is wonderful. Okay. Now, I want to, look at this, look at this new growth. It like refuses to lie down, no matter what I do. It's just, babies, man. Let's do some brows. I wanna show this to you guys because I posted on my Instagram a couple weeks ago, I was like, I think that I have stumbled on the best brow gel ever, like even better than boy brow. And I did say that authored is very much like Glossier, but I think that this has been improved upon. So this is the Tinted in Mid Brown 2, shade 2, and it is so similar to Boy Brow, but it has more hold and a, t a touch more pigment. So when I fill the brush, like when I just pull it out of the bottle, it has enough product on it for both brows. You know, I just kind of use one side and then the other side. It grabs every little brow hair. It wipes off just as easily as boy brow does. You know, it kind of doesn't smear all over the place. Not runny, not oily, not super waxy. You know, best I can figure, it does seem to have some fibers to it the same way that boy brow does. And it's kind of like when you've tried as much makeup as I have, you can't use something like this and not say she likes boy brow. You know, it would be much more further fetched, I guess you would say, farther fetched, that she would create this from scratch and that they would be so, so similar. It really feels like she, you know, knew what she liked and knew where she wanted to start. And I do feel like it is an improvement on boy brow. And it, it does, it dries better. Like it's not as dry as you're putting it on. Like it's not as matte, I guess, but it does dry. And then you can actually layer it and get more hold. So that's what we're gonna do. And I have something. Sometimes I just, I just can't, you know what I mean? Like I just can't just, like worry about the makeup and I just have to freaking scratch whatever itches. It just makes me crazy. I will sacrifice having red skin for a second. Okay, eyeliner. I'm gonna throw a little tiny bit of a matte in my crease just because I feel like we lost the illusion there. And I'm just using this kind of neutral to cool gray taupe in the Thrive Perfect Eye Palette. And also that does help me build the illusion of my eyes, you know, going a little bit further out. Ah, oh, even in all that scratching, I didn't get the hair until just now. Mm. Mm. All right, let's put on Tanya Burr's authored mascara here. Another just really lovely, just everything feels very snug and well done, and it's in metal. It's just nice. Great package. Beautiful, feathery eyelash look. I mean, so lightweight, such a beautiful mascara. It's not a tubing formula, so it is going to have a normal wash off, but I really, really like it. So pretty. Because you know I like the ability to get close on the root of the lashes, and that's gonna give me that kind of illusion of thicker lashes, but also I feel like it spreads them out really, really well. Like you have a lot of control. I will go in with a second coat, but first I'm going to go in with a second coat of the brow gel. You notice I didn't pencil my brows in. I'm just going on building this particular formula today. So that's like two coats versus one coat. It's not a crazy, crazy difference, but it does build on itself in a nice way and it doesn't like get carried away. And it's slightly, slightly shinier than Boy Brow because Boy Brow is a little bit matte. And this is a vegan formula, which is great because I think Boy Brow's main selling point is the fact that there is uh, beeswax in it. Uh, another coat of mascara. Did I only answer like two questions? Ooh, look at that mascara. It's like the uh, 
the new Aether one, except it like builds so much more. How has the pandemic shifted the person that you're growing into? Wow. I'm gonna swatch these Kosas glosses real quick. Unzipped, unbuttoned, and unhooked here. In that order. Unzipped, unbuttoned, unhooked. So unzipped is gonna be a cool, cool, uh, sparkly kind of pink. Um, unbuttoned is, I mean, of all of them, kind of the most neutral. And then unhooked, yeah, is <laughs> just a cream, no sparkle, oh, slightly lavender leaning beige. Gorge. So I'm going to obviously go with that last one on hooked. Is that what it's called? How has the pandemic changed the, you know what? There are so many ways that I could go about answering this question, but I think that it has made me decide that like, there is no point in waiting for the right time to prioritize the things that you really want. I think that uh, like our culture teaches us that it's all about kind of waiting your turn and that the people who don't wait their turn are trying to cheat the system or they are doing it off of other people's backs, skipping steps, whatever. A lot of times like people end up kind of getting to the end of the straight and narrow and deciding they didn't really want what they were going for in the first place. And for me, it made me reassess what I wanted my life to look like and work backwards from there instead of trying to kind of like please everybody and follow the rules. And I came to one, one thing recently, you know, thinking about having more kids or um, the people in my life who are feeling different kinds of angst having to do with the pandemic and like coming to me, not necessarily like for advice, but talking to me about it, the way that we talk to each other, you know? And my best kind of mantra is that you don't owe the world any level of your own unhappiness. You don't owe the world your suffering. You don't owe the world your inconvenience or your stress. No one is keeping score of those things. No one is saying, okay, well, she sacrificed X, Y, Z of her own happiness and therefore, she deserves this reward. She deserves to live well. She deserves to be happy. No one is making you do that. No one is caring if you do or don't. So do the thing that is going to make you the happiest with your life today and tomorrow and the next day, instead of constantly thinking about your life as something that's like, you know, waiting for you in the future, because it'll just be waiting for you in the future forever. Look at this color. Look at it. Look at it. This one's my favorite. It's actually a really similar shade to my khaki lip liner. I did want to share one thing with you guys. Besides mama and dada, my child, you know, he's not quite at his first words yet, but he now knows how to make the sound of the dog. So when the dog says, woo, 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 Simon goes, woo, woo, woo. And it is the greatest thing ever. Okay, I'm going to share my final thoughts quickly on each of these products. This is not a first impression on any of them, except for the lotion. Loved it, it's great. Adds some really nice slip and hydration, refreshed my face right before I put my makeup on. So let's talk about Authored first. Four products that I have here from Tanya Burr. This is gorgeous, her tinted moisturizer. I'm not sure that it comes in very many shades, but I mean, we're talking super, super low coverage. We're talking very new brand. It's a little bit of a double standard because she is an emerging brand with only a few products, but I will say the formula is lovely and you get a lot of product. This is 1.69 fluid ounces and it all comes in this beautiful, sustainable packaging. Really dig the mascara, so gorgeous. Like really, really into it. I hope I'm looking directly into the camera so that you guys can see what it looks like because it's a great mascara, it really is. The brow, love it. Did end up putting a little bit of pencil on just because the eye look ended up being a little bit more than I expected and so I wanted something to kind of come up to that level but it layers and it layers and it layers 
and it's super agreeable and it's better than boy brow. It is so much like boy brow, but it is an improvement on boy brow in my opinion. I like it so much. And then the lip balm, it's not a bad lip balm at all. It's just sort of completing the look I feel like, more so than being like a standalone product that you need to run out and buy specifically. Phytosurgeons, no one is surprised, right? It's absolutely beautiful. I really, really dig the colors that I used today. So like I said, that was, Defiant Dahlia was the initial one that I put on. And then the Orchid Overload was that unbelievably gorgeous, like ballerina pink topper that I put on. And they're really different in a great way. They're a little drier than a lot of other cream shadows that I have, but they're definitely still creams. You know how I talk about I'm like, okay, well this is like a creamy powder, but it's definitely a powder. This is definitely still a cream, but it has a dry down in a, just a really, really easy to work with kind of way. And I love, I mean, I love the impact that I'm getting right there on like my inner corner. And I did use uh, kind of, you know, let it gradient into Moonrise from M Cosmetics. These are just absolutely gorgeous. And this is the color that I have been really enjoying for an inner corner highlight because it just pops. And I wanted to make sure that I share these with you guys. Bitten, holy moly. It is actually an even prettier, more agreeable shade than I expected it to be as far as like the Fjords variety of shades go. It is an ideal pinched berry kind of cheek, you know, that just took a lap vibe on my skin tone. It's really giving me everything that I wanted. And if I have not mentioned it enough so far, this formula is just so soft. <laughs> but the one from Phytosurgeons that I tried, what was that one called? Inferno? Inferno also, I'm gonna swatch those next to each other because they might, they might just be dupes. Inferno from Phytosurgeons right here is actually a lot more terracotta. And it does have like a rosiness behind it, but the rosiness completely disappears in contrast to Bitten from M Cosmetics. When they sit next to each other, it's like this one is just so much rosier and pinker, but if you cover this up, you're like, oh, I can see the rose in that now, you know? So they did layer really beautifully, and this does have so much really gorgeous depth to it and a little bit more sheen uh, on the Phytosurgeons right here, but they're both incredibly beautiful and that is why I need to do a big, big swatch fest of my Fjord shades because the nuances are important. And finally, I think finally, right? Hmm, I think these guys, the new shades in the wet lip oil from Kosa's, oh, just milky, gorgeous. And you know, the unzipped shade is the one that's almost clear. So, you know, if you're looking for something that's extremely, extremely subtle, you know, go that direction, that cool toned, kind of leaning lavender pinky shade uh, unhooked is my favorite. Although they are all, you know, very subtly different and all incredibly gorgeous. I like it doesn't have any shimmer to it and it does have just that beautiful, like, you know, lavender gray coolness to it. And then unbuttoned is going to be the one that has just a little bit more richness to it. But they're all like, like I said, you know, you put that one in contrast to the other ones and it looked warm, but it's not. It's really not, and my skin is yellow. So, I mean, not yellow, yellow, but I mean, it's going to kind of counteract a lot of the cool tones that are in there. But I'm telling you guys, like, it's almost a shade range in that sense. Like, this is the deepest, I'm wearing the medium, and then the fairest one has, uh, you know, just mainly sparkle in it with just a, a hint of milky color. We're entering that time of year where my nose is just red at the end of every single video. Mwah! Okay, so that's the whole vibe today, guys. A very chill face of makeup and just an opportunity to catch up and answer some questions from you guys. Coming up soon is the fall haul. Behind this video will have been the Tower 28 review. Those were the biggest things that I got requests for in this Q&A prompt, but we're just like, when are you gonna post those videos? Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this and you like a good, chill, um, non-structured vibe every once in a while in a video, do give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. And thank you to these brands for the ones that sent me these products. Thank you for sending me these products. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.